Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wow. That was the best. The best yet. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Williams. Good to see your bright and smiling faces. Um, if you could grab that bulletin, open it up. Now, if you're visiting this morning, you can look to the sides in your pew, and there should be a little sheet of paper for you to fill out and turn in so we can have a record of your visit. Now that I've given you time to open up your bulletin, I'm not going to um, mention everything, so it will be your job to read this. Front, back, in the middle, however you want to read it. Um, but let me highlight a few things. This Wednesday, we will not have service, with it being um, the fourth week of July, so just know that. Um, Perry County Mission Trip. Now, we are finally in July, and it is coming the end of this month, Saturday the 30th of July. So if you are interested in that, make sure you get your name on the sign-up sheets in the foyers. Um, VBS donations needed. Pay attention to this one. We have Vacation Bible School coming up July 18th through the 22nd. And there are a couple of items, of course, that we need to make VBS happen. So if you are going to have to work that week, you can't help out, great! You can still help in some way. As you leave today, there's a huge trifold board, and it has some items listed on pieces of grass, clouds, fence posts. Pull those off, take it with you, and run to town and get that item and have it returned by the 13th of July, okay? Please do that. Um, don't forget there's some other things going on that you need to know about. The donations for the daycare, read about that. Safety committee meeting coming up soon. Children, we are going to go to the movies and eat lunch next Sunday after church. I'll remind you next Sunday, so be prepared, okay? Um, also, on the back, everyone look on the back with me. This is important because you are needed right after the service. This week, the floors in the church will be um, waxed and cleaned and shiny. Um, so we are going to have to get some things out of the daycare for that to happen in the daycare area. So if you brought your muscles this morning and willing to help, there are some things that need to be lifted and sent to the gym. So meet in the daycare after church this morning, okay, to help out with that. All right, of course, I've done my yap and now it's your turn. Look around. Find someone you have not said good morning to, or you just want to hug their neck or kiss them on the cheek or shake their hand and say good morning. Did you find them? Okay, good. Go get them. Go. Please pray with me. Gracious God, this morning as we gather in this room, quieten and prepare our hearts for worship. We call on you today to gather us in your love. And while your love is diverse, accepting, and equal, it is also united. Let our compassion reflect the, uni the unity of love in a diverse world. When we continue to hear about more violence and hatred every day, do not let us have fear, but let us be peacemakers of your perfect love. We know you are a God of justice and peace, but guide us to a place of openness and understanding so we may be better able to serve one another in love. Be with us now as we begin worship, and be with us as we leave with your love. In Christ's precious name we pray, amen.
today's scriptural scripture call from worship is from Isaiah 66. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overwhelming stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known in the hand of the Lord is with his servants. And his indignation is against his enemies. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, oh my. I mean, the guest got it and all of you missed it. <laughs> we need a little crowd participation on that one. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, yeah, rejoice and be glad in it. I like that. Page 97, all hail the power of Jesus' name. You can remain seated as we sing this great, great hymn of the faith. Everybody sing it. All hail the power of Jesus. question for you guys. Do you know what the word nemesis means? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> that immediate. No. You never heard that word before? So in superhero stories, you guys have all heard superhero stories, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. There's almost always there's a superhero and then there's a nemesis. And the nemesis is the person that's always trying to take over the world. So the enemy? Mm-hmm. So it's like the enemy. So in uh, word girl, do you know who the nemesis is in Word Girl? A lot of There's people. There's a lot of different ones. There's a lot of nemesis. There's but. the sandwich guy. The sandwich guy. <laughs> There's in uh, Batman. Do you know who the nemesis is in Batman? Joker. The Joker, that's right. Now, I have a question. Pinky and the Brain. Pinky and the Brain, they don't have a nemesis really. But, um, <laughs> so, do you guys have nemesis? Do you guys have a nemesis? Um, no. Have no? That's good. You don't have any nemesis? <laughs> Well, some people um, think of uh, a lot of people as kind of their enemies, people they don't like, people that they fight against. And in stories, the heroes and the villains always fight, right? Mm -hmm. But do you think that's what Jesus wants us to do with people we don't like? No. No. In fact, he said at one time to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So anybody that we don't like, we're not... Um, he doesn't say to fight, does he? Not like Batman and the Joker. And um, so he says to love them. 
And you guys remember, uh, well, you guys were here last week. Do you remember what Chris said about the greatest commandment last week? You guys remember that? Mercy. Greatest commandment to love your neighbor and love God and to I also love your enemy and pray for them. Me and Coco won. I know. So I want you guys to remember that whenever someone uh, is around that you don't like or someone that's mean to you, that we're not supposed to fight them or to hate them, we but to love them. We should be nice to them. We should be nice to them and we should love them. So I want you guys to always remember that, okay? All right, so here's today. Threes and fours. Well, you guys are going upstairs. We're not doing children's church for the rest of July, so you guys are going to go back Aww. and sit down with your parents, okay? All right, I'm going to sit down. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, not only do we come here this morning to celebrate the freedom that we do truly find in Christ, but on this special occasion, we recognize those who have um, given of themselves so that we as a country can have freedom as well. So we want to do something. If you have served or you are currently serving in our nation's military, would you please stand so that we can recognize you this morning? You have served or you are currently serving in our nation's military. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wow. Remain standing. Remain standing. Let's all stand in honor of them and sing this great hymn, 572. Talks about this wonderful country, America the Beautiful. Let's sing it out. seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Let's sing it. This is our offertory hymn. We'll do the first and the last verse. Here we go. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes and wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful light. this every time I sing this song I look at mama and she gets tickled because I used to think it said where the great big rats are stored <laughs> up until like three weeks ago so <laughs> let's sing the last in the beauty of the lilies Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make him holy let us live to make men free while God is marching on. Everybody sing it. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching. 
May we pray? Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us to come to your house, this holy place, and worship you. Father, we thank you for all of the many blessings that you give us every day. And we thank you for all those who are here to worship you. Thank you most of all for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we, time we come to give back those, a portion of those blessings that you have given us. And as we give these tithes and offerings, may they be ample enough to continue to uphold this work, place to worship in and also ample to the work that you would have us to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I was wondering, why is my wife not coming up here? She's being so disobedient. But I miss that doxology every time. I have asked uh, Linnell and the choir to sing this song. It's going to be new to a lot of you. It's new to a lot of the, the folks in the choir. But it is one of my favorites, and I love the chorus. Who can satisfy my soul like him? No one 
like Jesus can satisfy your soul this morning. Listen to the choir and Linnell as they sing.
Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. It is so great to be with you today. I love coming to Williams. There are so many things that bind us together and have for a long time. I was at the General Assembly just about a week and a half ago and was so happy to see a handful of Williams friends there. And this summer, Holly is serving with us at Sowing Seeds of Hope, and I hope you will sign up and join her for that trip in Perry County. To guilt you into that just a little bit, my husband turns 50 on Saturday, July the 30th. I said, we should plan a big surprise party. And he said, are you kidding? I'm going to go build a ramp in Perry County on my birthday for the Summer Church Challenge. Okay, so if my husband can go there for his 50th birthday and build a ramp or a porch, surely you could come join us. We will have a birthday party together. That would be great. It is a blessing to be with you today. Let us pray together. Lord, on this day, this beautiful summer morning, we are so grateful to be able to join together with our hearts united as one. We celebrate this week the gifts of all of your many blessings for the freedom we have in this country. We sit in this church and we are so grateful to be together knowing that across the world that there are places where believers are gathering and they are not as free. We pray for all of the world, Lord, where there are wars and rumors of war, where there is sadness and grief at home and abroad, where there is hate and hurt and lots of pain. We pray, God, that you will make us instruments of your peace, that we will be kind, compassionate, loving, full of grace, embracing all of those who are your children, no matter the color of their skin or where they are from. We are thankful for the way in which you love us all so deeply. May we be a reflection of your grace. And God, on this day, may we discover just a little bit more of what it means to be a disciple. In the name of Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Our passage today comes to us from Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 1. I invite you to turn there if you have your Bibles with you. As a little background, Jesus is on the road preaching and teaching, taking his disciples with him. He has sent out the 12 disciples, and there is so much work to be done that they are sending out more. The disciples and Jesus have recently gathered together with a huge crowd and were all served with five loaves and two fish. Jesus walked up on a mountain with Peter and John and James, where they saw Elijah and Moses. Jesus has healed those who are sick and has predicted his death and has turned his face toward Jerusalem. So Jesus is walking with urgency. And after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go! I am sending you out like lambs among the wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace be to this house. 
And if the head of the house loves peace, your peace will rest on that house. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for workers deserve their wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you, heal the sick that are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and you are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. I am a frequent traveler, thanks to my job, and I used to pack too many things. Big suitcases full of a variety of outfits in multitudes of colors and so, so many shoes because I love shoes. The article, however, a few years ago, I was on an airplane and pulled out the travel magazine and opened it up and was reading it. And inside, there was an article on how to pack for a week of business in a small carry-on piece of luggage. And so the article showed a rolling carry-on suitcase and how described how to pack with a color scheme in mind, with clothing articles that can mix and match, so a few articles can make several outfits. It's said to have a toiletry bag that stayed packed all the time. And so in my case, I only have to check what has run out and needs to be replaced. The article described how to survive a week with only two pair of shoes, a classic pump and a comfortable flat that coordinated with the color scheme. And the best, best advice of all was how to carry a colorful scarf and fun accessories to switch up your outfits from business to casual. It was brilliant. It changed my whole travel experience. I can now be gone for days with one small suitcase containing multitudes of options all in one color palette. Wow, it really changed my life. But in our passage of scripture today, Jesus' travel advice to all of the many new disciples that they were sending out, his travel advice is extreme. Jesus wants those 70 to 72 people to take far less than just a carry-on. In fact, he asks them to take nothing at all. No money. No backpack with a change of clothes. No anything. Just what they happen to be wearing. Can you imagine? Of course, it was another day in time. In fact, this could be one of those New Testament stories that we find really fascinating, but not pertinent to our situation. After all, which one of us in following Jesus is going to head down the road by foot, traveling to the next town without taking anything at all. But if we pause and ponder more deeply, maybe there are some lessons that we can learn about how to follow Jesus and how to pack lightly. First of all, packing lightly means giving and receiving hospitality. In the most literal sense of the reading of this passage of scripture, it is talking about the people that the Lord has sent out into a community to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those he has called to be ministers to a community. For me, that means taking care of the ministers that God has blessed us with and called to this place. The Bible passage reminds us that the Lord's laborers deserve to be paid. The message even says the laborers need three good meals a day, which means that we need to make sure that our ministers are able to eat and live 
providing for their families. But granting hospitality to our ministers goes beyond physical need. This passage talks about offering and receiving peace. As a person raised all of my life as the daughter of a pastor, one of the greatest gifts our family ever received was to be warmly embraced with love and encouragement by our church family, with lots of room and grace to be human, and lifted up in prayer and goodwill every day. I remember with sadness the church whose deacons found fault with everything my dad did, who didn't include him in major decisions, who were discouraging of every new idea, and honestly made our whole family feel like we were walking on pins and needles. Although there were loving people in the church, that handful of deacons caused my dad to eventually leave the church before he even found another position just to release my family, and especially my mom, from the stress of living in that place. On the other hand, I remember vividly the little church in a small town that did everything they could to show how much we were loved. We would come home from church to find a basket of fresh corn, beans, and tomatoes on our front porch from a member's summer garden, or the time when a few of the men who served in the volunteer fire department rushed to our home in the early morning hours to rush my dad to the hospital when he had a bleeding ulcer, the whole time saying, hold on, preacher, we've got you. When something didn't go well at the church, they encouraged us and walked with us beside us to try something different. Years later, long after my parents had moved to a different town, some of those same members came and sat with our family for days when my mother was on her deathbed at the age of 46, dying from breast cancer, and stayed until after the funeral was over. Taking care of the ones that the Lord sends out to do his work is unbelievably important, and I hope you take it seriously. Love all of your staff well and offer them a spirit of peace and encouragement as often as you can. However, this scripture passage isn't just for ministers. Each of us should be disciples of Jesus. It's very clear that the Bible says we've all been taught to give hospitality, welcoming all who come, loving our neighbors, but in this passage, also learning to receive. Jesus tells those 70 disciples to receive whatever hospitality is offered. That feels a little bit odd, doesn't it? We expect to be told to share hospitality, but not often to receive it. How happy we are when someone thanks us for a nice meal or is grateful for a place to stay. When the worshiping community extends hospitality to the stranger, the person on the margins, the immigrant, the least of these, the community finds itself warmed and renewed by the act of giving. And yet receiving is also a gift to oneself and to the giver. Some of the most memorable travel moments I've ever experienced have happened in the poorest places. I remember when some of my CBF friends and I were offered a simple meal of homemade tortillas and pork by a Native American family on a reservation in Arizona. I think about the many times I've been offered a grilled hot dog at a home or a gathering in Perry County. Many times, miles from home, I've been served a meal that transcended language and culture with its hospitality and welcome. It was more than I could have asked for or expected, and it made me feel like I was home, like we were building community, forming a friendship. Packing light also means traveling together. Jesus knew what he was doing by not sending out the disciples alone. He sends them out in pairs. The Bible says that the followers were sent out as lambs among wolves. 
I think it was a safety precaution, but also these disciples will find out just who their friends are. Although sharing the good news of Jesus sounds wonderful, it's not an easy job. The disciples will discover that their friends are the ones who welcome them, whether they are known to each other or not. We don't have to go to a foreign country or even another state to be on this disciple journey together. We share memories and adventures. We encourage each other to watch out for those who are harmful and don't have our best interest at heart, who turn us away at the door. And that happens. But mostly, we talk about those lovely situations where we are given incredible hospitality, where we were welcomed, and where the communities were filled with grace and kindness toward others. I think of your amazing church and the mission teams you've sent out to help an elderly man in Mobile, or the poor people of the Rio Grande Valley, or the people of Marion, Alabama. How beautiful are those stories? Those journeys that you embark on together transform you and your community just as much as it is helpful to the people you serve. Our scripture continues by telling us that packing lightly means leaving behind the painful past and walking into a more hope-filled future. When Jesus encourages the disciples to shake the dust from their feet, he is acknowledging that they found themselves in a place where no one offered them the hospitality of washing their feet. He encourages them to leave that place and travel to another place where the peace they have to offer is received and reciprocated. How often have we found ourselves in a painful place and can't seem to move forward? Do we sit around talking about and reliving the hurt of the painful past over and over again? Jesus invites us to let it go, shake it off, and journey to a more loving, grace-filled, peaceful future. Finally, packing light allows us to see that the kingdom of God is near. Did you notice that Jesus reminds them that the kingdom of God isn't something that's going to happen in the far distant future? In fact, Jesus says the kingdom of God is near. It's right here where you are. Jesus sends his followers out to share news of the kingdom and participate in kingdom hospitality. So in our scripture, they go out and when they return to him, Their hearts are filled with joy. They are full of stories. On their way, they have found welcome and warmth and been filled with the knowledge that God is working with them and through each one of them, individually and together. It's almost like a version of Noah's Ark, but with the pair sit on a head, not gathered in. The flood here isn't destructive. Instead, the coming waters are waters of baptism. And the disciples on the journey, like Noah, are preparing the land for a new covenant with God. If you were to read the stories before and the stories after this one in Luke, you would find that the stories of the first 12 disciples being sent out to the towns and villages and of the crowds following Jesus, and him feeding multitudes with five loaves and two fish, the story of the Good Samaritan, and the story of Jesus spending time with Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. All of these stories while Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, living out the kingdom of God in a way people never expected. As followers of Jesus today, There is a freedom that comes from packing light. In Christ Jesus, there is a freedom that allows us to offer kindness, love, and grace to all of those we meet. There is a freedom that allows us to leave the pain of rejection or hurt behind and to journey into a more hopeful, loving future. And there is freedom 
and walking hand in hand with others on this journey as disciples, opening our eyes to see the kingdom of God wherever we go. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We ask that you open our eyes and our ears to see the freedom that comes from being called as disciples of Jesus. May we share the love that his death and resurrection sets free in our entire world. May we walk out of this church today being the church, transforming the community into which we have been called. In the name of Christ, our Savior, who loves us more than we could ever imagine, we offer this prayer. Amen. We are going to stand and sing a hymn of response this day. I ask you to ponder in your heart as we sing together where God is leading you. Let's stand as we sing. I'd like to thank Terry for being here this morning, and I don't know if this is out of line or whatever, but I'm going to ask after the service if she'll stand down here in front, and if you want to say hello or come by and just thank her for being here, and it's good to have a good old friend in here talking to us and giving us a, a lesson we learn. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this space and time in this house this morning. Lord, thank you for your spirit that you brought into this world. Lord, that you unselfishly allowed each and every one of us to share a part of you and us share part of us with you. Lord, it is what makes us go out and do the things that you ask. For without, for without that love, we would, sit, we would sit and do nothing. Lord, go with us from this place and bring us back here safe and for the ones that's traveled here, and give them safe passage home. Lord, thank you again for loving us and we love you back. It's in Christ's name I pray, amen. amen.